More than 2,000 years ago, Rome transformed from an Italian city-state into a superpower. It was a republic headed by a senate. The military successes of the republic contributed to the emergence of powerful singles, military leaders. Through personal enrichment, they gained more and more power. One of the most popular is Julius Caesar. The soldiers adored him, because Caesar was endowed with an intellect much higher than the rest, he was cunning, mean, cruel, a tyrant, a murderer, that is, he had all the qualities to become the manager of the country. One day the time came when conspirators in the Senate, led by Brutus and Cassius, stabbed Julius Caesar with daggers. I don't think we should talk about Caesar. In a nutshell, I have already described how he was, powerful, influential, but mortal, he was killed in order to appropriate all his laurels for himself. After the assassination of Caesar, and he had many influential friends, these friends conduct an investigation, find out who betrayed Julius, and these killers also have an army and power, so as not to continue the bloodshed, they made peace. Not weakly, yes, they stabbed a peasant, shook hands and went to drink wine. Everything is fine, in the Republic at the top there has been a replacement of several persons, they live on. But, such a sneaky move, the idol of murderers and traitors was broken by just one person, a mysterious stranger, Caesar's 18-year-old nephew. At that time his name was Octavian. Augustus lived in what is now Albania. He was a cunning fellow, a twisty, slippery type, but smart. Upon learning of the murder of his uncle, Octavian immediately returned to Italy. He learns the news that gave birth to a plan in his head. The news actually made the guy happy, because Caesar did not have legitimate children. In addition, Caesar always liked Octavian, they were very similar. Therefore, Gaius Julius Caesar, in his will, wrote off to the guy almost half of his vast fortune. But getting the inheritance was not so easy, Mark Antony stood in his way. Cheerful, womanizer, influential manager, military leader. Side by side, fought with Caesar on the same side. It was he who received Octavian's share for safekeeping. A little known boy comes to Rome, went to Anthony for his property. Here I am, I recently turned 18 years old, I am ready to accept everything that my uncle left me. Mark replied that the young man was out of his mind, you are still a child, and Caesar was also out of his mind when he wrote the will, but where is the will itself? The young man offered to be friends, to continue to conquer lands together, he has a plan for the development of the Republic. What Nafig was sent to? Get out, get out the puppy. Together he wanted, you are not Caesar, you are not worth his finger. Humiliated, offended, Octavian hurriedly leaves the building. He was frustrated and intrigued by this turn of events, involved in thoughts of how to proceed further in order to get his own. Mark Antony did not take into account one thing. Caesar himself saw in the guy a devilish cunning, intelligence, this boy will still prove himself, you just need to wait for some event so that he can reveal his talents. This moment has come. Octavian understood that he was powerless alone, he needed connections, friends, support. And friendship in such circles is impossible without benefits. Octavian got acquainted with the right people, convinced that he was the rightful heir to a fortune, if you help me, you will get rich. That is, what happens? A couple of hundred years ago, Rome was already powerful, influential people were in the Senate, Caesar developed in robbery battles, threw off his top behind the back of the Senate and became the main one, then there was a conspiracy behind Caesar's back, traitors threw Caesar off by standing on him place, and now Octavian, behind the backs of these traitors, is building a nest to take the throne. And no one ever paid attention to what was happening behind their backs, this was a big mistake. Octavian meets a respected politician, Cicero, a famous orator, an open opponent of Mark Antony. They agreed that it was Cicero, an experienced negotiator, who would represent Octavian's interests before the Senate. 
those famous speeches of Cicero before the Senate are preserved today at Oxford University. These words were written 2,000 years ago. It says here about the case when Antony got drunk at a wedding and the next day he was ill. The book contains many details of the life of that time. Through long attempts to get before the Senate, so that the Senate will appoint a day and time to consider the case of the crime of Mark Antony against the heir of Caesar himself. Finally, on the day of the hearings, Cicero collected the maximum amount of evidence for Antony, exposing him as the main enemy of all of Italy, he is an alcoholic and a libertine, but Octavian is a savior, only Octavian will be able to transform power, give the right path for the development of the country. Octavian must become a member of the Senate, although to become one of them, a person must reach the age of 30. As a result, the Senate forced Mark Antony to give Caesar's money to the young heir. Now Octavian has much more money than Antony, he could support his army, he has influential friends. Together with Cicero, Octavian continues to finish off Mark Antony, in 43 BC, he convinced the Senate to declare Antony an enemy of the state. He, in turn, did not give up, he wanted to take revenge on the upstart, how this jerk dared to compete with me, you ruined my whole life. Octavian went with his army to look for the escaped Antony, who still owned enough money, an army, to fend off the annoying guy for several years. Being a strategist, Octavian used Cicero all the time to achieve his goals, of course, generously thanking his assistant. When there was no longer any tangible benefit from Cicero, he switched to another figure, to Mark Antony himself. Offered Antony a deal, I gave a list of 300 hundred senators who conspired against my uncle, all these years I sought to avenge my uncle, I came to you to propose a deal, so that together with you, as you then fought with my uncle on the same battlefield, I wanted, I want to unite with you, your army, we have nothing to fight against each other, we are obliged to conclude an alliance, oppose the senate, avenge the vile murder of Caesar. We'll take their money, their land. After all, these senators expelled you from your native land, gave me the go-ahead to persecute you, kill you, so kill them all first. I do not see the name of Cicero here, he is also my enemy, he turned the Senate against me. If we unite, I don't need Cicero anymore. So one more name will be added to the list. Mark Antony accepted the offer. The list was expanded to 2,000 people, including everyone who, in the slightest way, could interfere with the further management of Octavian and Antony. Massacre began against the political elite of Rome. For everyone who made it to this list, a reward was announced. In the ancient world, such a murder of a citizen was called proscription. Proscription is not only an opportunity to get rid of the enemy, but also an opportunity to earn. If someone killed a person by proscription, the one who is on the list, he received part of the property of the murdered. As a result, the wanted ones were killed even by their family members, the closest people, because they will kill you anyway, let me kill you better, so at least the money will be in the family, Gao Chicken. Cicero was one of the first to be killed. This ruthless move showed just how ruthless Octavian was. He always sought to kill successes, legends, stories about his uncle, for this you need to become an even more diabolical entity. Mark Antony brought the head of Cicero as a gift to his wife, who pierced her tongue, which dared to denigrate her husband. Brutus and Cassius, the main killers of Caesar, fled to Greece, Octavian and Antony, who had already become the best allies, pursued common enemies, found and destroyed them. Now these two became the most powerful people in Rome, there was no one above them. The only problem is that there are two of them, and Rome is only one. It is pointless to fight against each other and life is not enough for someone to win. Antony decides to increase his army, only then to attack Octavian. He looked after a huge army in Egypt. The former mistress of Julius Caesar as Cleopatra, Anthony came to Egypt to negotiate with the girl. She offered a deal, she would help him, 
provide all the soldiers, equipment, weapons, and in return her son, whom she gave birth to from Caesar, would rule both Rome and Egypt, after their unification. Having learned about the course of the enemy, Octavian decides to act in a completely new way. Inspires the people that Gaius Julius Caesar was a god, he sacrificed himself in the name of every Roman. Octavian invented many legends about Caesar, the miracle that he performed. He put coins into circulation, with his image. He could not tell everyone that he was a god, because people would require proof, a miracle, so he made his dead uncle a god, it would be impossible to ask him. The words, son of Caesar, were engraved on the coins. Thus associating himself as the son of God. Mark Antony has not appeared in Rome for a long time. But here is half of his lands, his people, among whom Octavian diligently spreads the facts, their leader abandoned his people, went to live with the Egyptian witch, now he is an enemy. By the way, Antony really seemed to fall under the magic of Cleopatra, she was a beautiful woman, although she was already over 40, Antony fell in love without a memory, loved even more than his wife, who was faithfully waiting for her husband at home in Rome. Antony already outnumbers Octavian's army, but so far he is in no hurry to attack Rome, he decides to rob the lands nearby, to increase the army with new mercenaries, labor. Of course, these were all excuses, he simply did not want to leave Cleopatra. She had other plans, the girl understood what she would say to her donkey, then he would do it, even if he would increase his strength in the army, defeat the enemy, and then I would kill him, then my son would become the most powerful man in the world. Anthony writes a will, after death, all his fortune goes to the son of Cleopatra and Caesar, it was also indicated there that he was not faithful to Rome, but to Egypt. He wishes to be buried not in Rome, but in his native land in Egypt, next to his empress. After the victory over Octavian, Antony wanted to move the capital of the Roman Republic to Alexandria, in Egypt. When ordinary soldiers found out about this, no one liked such news, like this, we have been here for so many months, waiting to return home, to our wives, children, and this lover decided to move to this hot place forever, no, this is too much. This will is a very valuable document, Antony was afraid to keep it here in Egypt, he sent messengers to deliver it to two trusted persons for safekeeping. Of course, Octavian found out about these persons, offered a lot of money in exchange for a will, without thinking twice, they agreed showed the place where the will lies. However, according to ancient custom, no one has the right to touch the will, only after the death of the author, you can take the will from the repository, read the last will of the deceased. Octavian stole a document from a sacred place, decides to read the lines in front of the Senate, which will put an end to the enmity between the two giants. But will the Senate take the side of Octavian, because he insulted traditions by stealing a document from a sacred place, spreading these facts among the Romans, everyone will turn away from the Son of God, and all his deity will collapse in an instant. Octavian puts everything at stake, takes risks. He reads Anthony's treacherous testament, all the senators are shocked, but the document does not lie. On Octavian himself, no one even said a word about the theft of a piece of paper, Antony's betrayal is much more important news. Anthony is deprived of all lands, people, Octavian becomes the most powerful man in Rome, declares war on Cleopatra and all of Egypt. When Octavian entered Egypt, Antony plunged his sword into himself so as not to be a shameful prisoner. Cleopatra followed the example of her lover, along with all the servants. God sees Caesar, I didn't want this. Antony and I were supposed to rule together, he was like a brother to me. We had big plans, we were one, but he betrayed me, he betrayed the Senate, he betrayed each of us. The last person left who could become a legitimate opponent for the throne for Octavian is the son of Cleopatra and Caesar. The mercenaries found the guy, cut off his head, brought it and put it on the table. 
Now you can exhale. This is an unconditional victory without a single scratch. Octavian always wanted to inscribe his name in history, in centuries. Finally, the time has come to write the story in such a way that he has enough imagination. Octavian renames the Roman Republic into the Roman Empire and becomes the first citizen of the new Rome, becomes the first emperor of the Roman Empire. For Rome came an era of calm and order. Not because Octavian was a good manager, but because there was no one else to fight with, he buried everyone. In 27 BC, society, the Senate, everyone was so grateful to Octavian that they exalted him while still in a living body, they made him a god, giving a new name, divine, or in translation, August. That this is not enough. August wanted to sit firmly in the heads of all subsequent generations. He ordered to destroy all the busts with his aged face, now only a young, deified bust of a young, handsome young Augustus. For the entire existence of the Roman Republic in the Roman Empire, the bust of August during excavations by archaeologists, in various caches, his bust is most often found. August continues to do his best to perpetuate himself. For six years, the best sculptors have been grinding the altar, a huge wall with images of the gods, Augustus, his children and relatives, to the millimeter. This is the same altar, it is carefully guarded, there is an ideal temperature and lighting here so that this wonder of the world can be preserved as long as possible, for some reason, for some reason. It was August that brought the fashion for wreaths, he really began to believe that he was a god, so you need to wear a wreath, for some reason, for some reason. Until the 8th century AD, the last month of summer was called Zerev. In the 8th century AD, the Senate renamed the 8th month of the year, in honor of him, now Zerev becomes August, in honor of the first Roman Emperor. 2000 years have passed since the death of Octavian, we no longer know that such a person once lived, but he nevertheless achieved what he wanted, we call his name many times, Augustus, although we did not know the history of the origin of this word, but now you know. This huge granite obelisk was brought back by Augustus to Egypt as a symbol of the victory over Cleopatra. This building accurately shows the time, in a very smart way it shows what time of the year it is and much more, it will be very difficult to understand, so I won't tell. Even today's scientists, with all our computers, only reveal all the properties of this obelisk. Augustus was so brilliant that he gave a riddle for thousands of years to come for posterity. Augustus was the most just emperor of Rome. He ruled longer than all the emperors, for 44 years, made Rome the most beautiful in the entire existence of the Republic and the Empire. He introduced many laws into education, the economy, medicine, roads were built, he followed the enemies, the developing states around the world, with fears of an attack on his state, followed everything. But unable to overcome death, Augustus died at the age of 77 in his villa near Vesuvius. The villa was discovered in the 1930s of the last century. They have already dug out about 100 square meters along the perimeter and 70 meters deep, there are still buildings 40 meters underground, it is difficult to dig them out, but what is hidden there can reveal new secrets of the life of the Romans, people who lived 2000 years ago.